Mr. Uh, Escamilla has been an intern principal at Foreman for almost two years now, uh, doing the work of a principal. And uh, again, as Mr. Asensio stated, that numerous um, staff members have been inquiring about uh, if we had to go through the whole principal selection process or could the LSC as a body uh, vote uh, on this particular uh, issue? So that's uh, my um, question. Uh, if we could maybe get a little bit more input on that. <clears throat> Thank you. I, um, I just wanted to express uh, another thing. We find ourselves in this juncture where um, we've known Mr. Escamilla for two years. I, I have witnessed, and I know many faculty members have witnessed, the skills of the leader that he is. Uh, whether, whether or not the faculty agrees with it or not, the soul, uh, the, 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 the weight of the election of the principal ultimately, ultimately resides within the body of the LSC. It is the LSC who has the ultimate um, uh, decision or word in extending a four-year contract to any candidate for the principalship of the school. Uh, we, might, we might make selections that the majority would not agree with. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we have been consulted. That's one of the reasons why we have been asking questions and uh, receive feedback from the faculty. Um, based upon the past experiences that we have had, and we have had many, I, I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't know what to do. I, I, I know what I want, again, as a, at a personal level, but I'm still questioning my decision based upon what I have gathered from the faculty. And again, you know, it's the, the ultimate the ultimate responsibility of electing the principal is not the faculty. They have a say, they do, but the ultimate decision to extend that contract resides on the LSE, no one else's. Uh, just to, I just want to make sure I'm understanding this right. So you want to know if we can create a process on on either extending or or choosing a different principle? Mr. Flores, I, 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 want, I want to clarify this because I don't want I don't want these words to be taken out of context. Traditionally, when there is a vacancy on the principalship or the, the contract has been descended to a principal or the, the principal for some reason uh, leaves the school, the position opens. And in our school, we have had the tradition of having a committee that represents the multiple disciplines that we teach in our school. This is a calendar for us to examine the potential candidates of uh, people who want to become principal of our school. That reduces the amount of work that the LSE has based upon the recommendation of that committee. But that decision of that committee can come, up to, uh, come down to two candidates and it is up to the LSE to decide whether or not that, those two candidates can be considered to be part of, to, to be a principal of the school. And, uh, you know, if the, if the LSC decides not to choose any of those two committees, we have to start all over again. However, the difference between that process and the process that we find ourselves today is that we have had our interim principal for two years, all of us in our school have experienced 
working under his leadership for two years. We know the capabilities. We know how far he goes. We know the dedication. We know the team that he has been working with since he came into the, into the building. Many people have left. Some people have come in. Uh, we are all working in this together. But again, the process is slightly different from the tradition. That is why we had to consider uh, those two processes. So it's not it's not that we have to do it. It's that we can we should consider it. I don't know if I explain myself correctly. Is there anyone waiting to move for a vote? Well, the vote the vote has been taken. The vote uh, we we are discussing. Uh, to open uh, the principal selection and contract process. Uh, now we have to decide whether we want to go ahead and explore other possibilities or if we want to support what we have now as the leader that we have and then make the, the process much more expeditious. Mr. Sanjay, would you be suggesting like polling the current staff to see whether they feel a committee like this is necessary? So just, just to reiterate that decision. Just to reiterate, and I hope um, Veronica eventually jumps on. She said she was going to be on the call. Um, but uh I, I think I understand what Mr. Asensio is saying, but I correct me if I misunderstood. Um, there is a, this particular vote simply initiates the process. Correct. And what that means, what that means is that the people on the LSC would then be trained by LSC central office on how to conduct the principal selection process that is and correct. contract process. So that all of you, all of you would receive training on how to conduct the process. Now, in the middle of that training, and as you conduct the process, you can you can perhaps I don't I'm not hundred percent sure on this particular point um, to expedite the process and simply make me the offer of the contract as the LSC, or if you wish to open it and say. We want to open it to candidates who um, want to apply towards uh, foreman become the principal, even after I've just put in two years of work to establish uh, yeah. the foundation. And that is your that would be your choice. Um, yes. But again, this particular vote that we just took just simply initiates the process and then initiates your training. Just to be clear. So there, I feel like there. What Mr. Asensio is bringing up, I think there's still time because you all still need to be trained in the process. Yes. Usually, usually the process takes a few months to do, um, and it is not, in my in my experience, and Miss Woods, correct me if I'm wrong, but in our experience, we go all the way down to the end of June in order for us to go through the entire process provided that the LSC approves to open a committee from the faculty to gather that information and to open the con to, to open the selection for other candidates. And I understand exactly what you're saying, Mr. Camilla. And uh, uh, you're correcting what you're saying, that we need to have training because, it's a, see, the decision that we make, it doesn't matter who we choose. The, the, the decision that we make as a body of the LSC will affect our school for four years. And therefore, we need to be very judicious and very conscious of what we are doing. That's why we need to have the training because some of us are seasoned, some, more, some of our members are much more seasoned than some of us, uh, and to answer Ms. Ann Malha's um, question, if we do not give, if we do not give the in the in the event in the event that 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 we did, what, that we 
um, open for the committee. If we do not give the opportunity to the faculty to have a say in what we are deciding, I believe in, in it, and I know this from past experience, that it will backfire on us. Even though, even though we are the two elected members of the LSE to represent the faculty. So I'm wondering, in in the past, has it been that like you open up a committee and then whoever wants to be part of the committee joins, or could it be the PPLC, which is an extension of the LSC, who just becomes this committee? In 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 a, in an ideal case, the PPLC will take uh, take a a a, um, a position on that matter too. But, and Ms. Wu is correct me if I'm wrong, please. We have had committees that represent the entire departments. Some committees have had 20 members, and those 20 members have worked to select the, the few candidates that we have in, in the pool, you know? Uh, and then from that, from those two that remain, is that when we have uh, the final selection. But what Mr. Escamilla is saying here is that this is just a vote to open up the committee. The 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 the, uh, the vote is to open the process of principal selection so that we can have proper training on how to select the principal, and then after that process is completed, that's when we should decide <clears throat> as an LC to see if we are opening up. Uh, for the committee, or if we are going to go directly to what we have to do. Mr. Asensio, just for time purposes, I understand what you're saying. And I think once we're done with the training, if I'm understanding correctly, once we have the training and um, all LSD members know, again, what we're doing, then we move forward with the committee. So I guess we will discuss this once we get to that point. But I'm confident that we all will receive the proper training and do our own research, as I will myself. Um, whether you know, continue a support, Mr. Escamilla, or what comes next. But I think again, we we understand your uh, point. But I think once we get training, we should all meet again and discuss um, those committees. If you agree with that, I do agree with that. But I just want to make the clarification because I don't want. I don't want any misunderstandings throughout the road. This is a long journey. It's, it's, it's a long journey, a very complex journey. It's four years contract, whether we want to stay with what we have, whether we want to change and uh, open a new, a, new, a new era, that's a decision that the LSE will take. And I understand that the vote is only for us to be trained on the selection of the committee. And I understand the pressure of time. And I also understand that we have until the end of June to do this process. But I just want to make clear, very clear, vehemently clear, that we have that option. I'm just putting it out there. We have that option. So we were on um, item number 6B, which was any other members' input or ideas wanting to uh, put them out, on, out there. Uh, it could be about anything that you wanted to discuss as an LSC member. Uh, so I have uh, like a question. Uh, so I'm I I'm running for the uh, local school council advisory board. Is this an opportunity to speak about that to the local school council? I'm just asking: Is this the right place, or do or not? I'm not too sure. Can you repeat that again? I completely missed the point. 
So I just, uh, I'm running for local school council uh, advisory board. Uh, I'm just wondering if this is the right place to uh, announce my candidacy and why I want to run, or is that not allowed? Just want to clarify, even though I kind of mentioned it. Yeah, and I know that you're trying to run for the um, the overall advisory board for LSCs, correct? Yes. Um, you can certainly, uh, uh, now that Veronica's, Veronica's just on, so that, that would be a, maybe a good question to ask as she's on the call right now. Veronica, uh, Israel Flores, our secretary on our LSC, is just asking a question about whether he can share information about his interest in serving on the LSC advisory board um, during our LSC meeting. Uh, so my recommendation is that he reach out to my director. Um, the application process has ended. And if you have, um, if you have uh, that desire, there are always some members that are appointed after the election process. So reach out to me. You have my, my cell number, right? Yes, I, I just do want to say I did apply. I sent uh, the information um, and this week is going to be the forum. So I just wanted to see. If right, okay, so let me, let me see because this week is the forum and I don't think they put you on the ballot, but what can happen is, let me reach out, let me follow up and, 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 and see what's, what's happening because we're Northwest and I will, reach out, I will reach out to you after I get that information tomorrow. Okay. But if uh, you do not, if you did not make the deadline, um, I could recommend you as an appointee, okay? Uh, I, I did make the deadline. I'm in the, I'm in the, in the flyer. Oh, so uh, you're on the flyer. That means you're on yes. the ballot. Correct. So what he can do is he can announce during public participation that he is running and ask for the support of the LSC and the public. Okay. Okay. That's, that's what I wanted to get to. So is this the moment or do I have to wait for the... I recommend waiting to public participation. Okay, thank you for the clarification. So, um, Ms. Woods, um, I don't know if you wanted to ask your question now that uh, Veronica's here. Um, to, Veronica, just an FYI. They voted through initiating the principal selection and contract process. Um, so that's initiating the process, but there were some questions after the fact, um, if, if you don't mind answering a question about that. Sure, I don't mind as long as the chairperson gives me the floor. Do I have the floor? Señora Mateos, la, la señora Dresden está preguntando si le puede dar tiempo para hablar sobre cómo clarificar eh, la pregunta de, de los comités. Of course. Sí, está bien. Okay, uh, Ms. Woods, what's the question? So our question was, uh, we have voted to uh, start the, the principal selection uh, process so that we can get trained uh, and so forth. I guess our question was, do we, ha do we have the option of opening it up to other, uh, I guess, uh, candidates or could we bypass that uh, since we have a principal who's been an intern for the last two years and if the LSC uh, votes uh, on that, is that uh, uh, eligible? Are we able to do that? So, um, or how does you that? You have had an interim in place for a year. 
and you have to open it up for anyone to apply. Okay. Now, during the training process, we'll go over the required steps. And one of the things is the required steps is to vote what you all just did, post the advertisement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're, if the LSC is going to give their interim principal, which is in place, the contract, mm -hmm. you still will have to review each resume in a closed session. Mm -hmm. Then after you review each resume in a closed session, the LSC must discuss and agree by a vote of seven yes to give one candidate the contract. So upon reviewing the resume, the LSC can decide to vote on one candidate after they renew, after they review the resume. So we're still going through all the, the, the process. As you have to go through the process. You have to go through the required steps, but you do not have to do the optional step. And the, and the required steps are vote to go into principal selection, vote to post the advertisement. Because remember, Chicago Public School is an equal opportunity employer. We have to allow everyone that is eligible to apply. Upon replying, you review the resume. You're not required to interview. After review of the resumes, you can vote to give the contract to the candidate of your choice as long as you have seven yes votes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we are now moving to item number seven, our reports. So, so Madam Chair, before we go to reports, I want to make sure the LSC knows that uh, you will have to contact me for a training overview before you can post the advertisement. Okay. Reports from chairperson, no reports today. Principal, Mr. Escamilla. Yes, um, I will give a portion of my time um, of my report to the alderman who is on the call, um, alderman of the 31st Ward, who will be sharing um, some key points of the ward's overall goals. The idea is because we have the democracy school designation that we want to begin to think about as an LSC, I need, I need to leverage your support and, and advice, um, begin to leverage what the uh, ward has created for goals so that we can help and support with alignment of our curriculum for our students to participate and see themselves as engaged civilians in their immediate community practicing and, and learning uh, uh, the procedures of democracy and civic engagement. And so therefore I will now turn it over to the Alderman Felix Cardona, who will share with us some of the goals from the 31st Ward. Thank you, Prisco, Principal Escamilla. Um, is it possible I could defer to Jeremy Cuevas uh, for, so he could speak on the Northwest Housing Center, if it's possible? Um, we will have we will have um, another public participation um, uh, opportunity at the end, either or. I'm open for e either if he wants to talk now, if, he, if you want to connect it to what you're talking about, or if he wants to talk at the end, whatever um, is best. Um, it kind of entails with them as well what they're trying to do, so I'd rather have them start and then I can just follow th follow through. Okay, so I will give a portion of my time initially to Mr. Cuevas, if he's still on the line. Mr. Yep. Cuevas, go ahead. Hello, uh, Foreman LSC. Nice to meet you all. My name is Jeremy Cuevas. I am the youth organizer here at the Northwest Side Housing Center. Uh, it's located on Diversity and Laramie. We're in the 31st Ward. Um, 
I lead a group of youth, around 15 students in the Belmont Craven community, um, part of our youth council. And it's a leadership program. Uh, we recruit students from all over Belmont Craven. Um, and the goal of our program is to just develop leaders and to provide a safe space for students for them to grow as a young person, uh, provide academic support, um, and also um, a safe place for them to um, for them to be at. So um, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Xander. He's one of our youth here, who's just going to explain a little bit more, and then um, I want to give it back to the alderman. Hi, my name's Xander. I'm part of the youth council, and one of the things that um, the youth council like strongly advocates for is for better transportation. So one of the things we've been working on is uh, more divvies in Belmont Cragen. And as of right now, we actually got a divvy approved for Stymeds. And right now we're trying to get one for Reese Park. And another thing we're trying to do is get at least three to five miles of bike lanes for the community. And we're trying to upgrade the buses from a grade F to at least a C, maybe more. Thanks, Xander. Um, so yeah, we're just a nonprofit in the community. We work closely with um, Alderman Cardona, who's been great. Um, he's always supporting our young people, always supporting the community. So I think uh, for us being here today is just to start the conversation and just to uh, introduce ourselves. And if there are any our youth at Foreman High School um, that we can connect with to be a part of our uh, program um, to better our community, uh, just reach out to the Alderman and he can, um, he can send them our way. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeremy. Hi, uh, good, good evening, Ellis, uh, LSC Foreman. This is Alderman Cardona. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak on my goals and trying to interact with the students at Foreman High School. Um, as you can see, I do partner up with Northwest Housing Youth, and we've done a lot of stuff since I've been in the office with them. Uh, we, um, when it came to bus stops and bus uh, and having the buses go from a grade F to at least a C. I've been pushing hard with talking to individuals at CTA because you know how students, they always take the bus. And if the bus is late, they're going to be late for class. So we're pushing, uh, trying to find uh, better ways and solutions for Belmont and diversity bus to, uh, instead of uh, them waiting 15, 20 minutes because the bus should come between five or seven minutes, uh, coordinating with CTA, how to make it better for students to get to school. Uh, also with the bike lanes, you know, one thing that um, I, I've i done is uh, repainted uh, diversity in my ward bike lanes because you couldn't really see them and, and uh, they were faded. So last year uh, during COVID, I repainted them and basically now they're more visible. Cars could see them and then you have the, the either high school students or just adults just riding on the street there, you know, there's visibility of a bike lane. Um, one goal or one of the things I'm trying to do with, um, and I know the kids from Foreman High School could help me with this, is try and bring a uh, bike lane on Belmont Avenue. Because if we bring a bike lane to Belmont Avenue, the kids from the neighborhood could jump on their bikes and go to school on their bikes instead of waiting for the bus. And as, at least they have some kind of safety on the street uh, with cars because they have their initial lane for bike lanes on Belmont Avenue. So I think that would be a great thing for foreman students to basically uh, partner up with me and with Northwest Housing to bring a bike lane along Belmont Avenue. Um, and if you don't know, Belmont Avenue is shared by almost three aldermen, myself, Alderman Raboyas, and Alderman uh, Gil Villegas. So all three of us, we talked and we're going to try and do something uh, on Belmont Avenue, but it starts with me, 31st Ward. Actually, it starts with 30th Ward. I apologize. And then it comes to me, 30th, uh, 31st Ward, and then back to 30th, and then back to, and then back to 31 and then 36. Uh, so uh, one thing, uh, the, that's some of the things I'm working on for this year. It's kind of weird because the Alderman office, we have to think of HET. And uh, one thing... Um, that I want to get more uh, engagement with the students is basically having to serve the community in a greater way. Uh, so in, in that, we're, I'm doing another food drive this Saturday at St. Uh, Genevieve's. So on the chat, I'm going to put Angel Vega, who's my staff here. So if you know any students that need uh, 
hours or they want to do community service or they want to do community engagement, uh, please reach out to Angel Vega. And I'm going to share it right now with, with you all on the chat. But we're still in COVID. So since we're still in COVID, uh, one, there's two things, uh, three things that's very important to the community. One is food, assess accessibility to food, accessibility to the tests, and accessibility to the, to the vaccine. Uh, we're doing the food drive, and, and I love, like last year, our partner with uh, Principal Escamilla and some of the guys from the football team. We did a food, we did a food distribution right there at Form High School. We served, what, over 500, 600 families they came around and it was a great thing that the school participated and, you know, it was something good for that area in the ward. Um, so we're going to do another one, but it's in the south, it's at St. Genevieve's, but as well as vaccination. Um, I'm working really hard to bring vaccination here into the northwest side to the 31st ward and the 30th ward and 36, but I'm particularly focusing on my ward, 31st. I'm hoping to start having um, vaccination tents up by next time in April. Right now, we're doing seniors, but one thing I would love to have is if you're if the students want to be part of this vaccination of volunteer, email us because the thing is we're looking for volunteers to help sign up uh, seniors uh, in our office, or when we have the vaccination uh, the day of the vaccination, they still have to. Uh, sign in and all that. So we get volunteers to sign in. And and to me, I don't think what's, I, I believe it's something greater to serve that under this, uh, this situation, this pandemic is uh, doing just the simple thing of just uh, registering someone so they could get their vaccination. So I think, um, you know, this partnership with Foreman High School with uh, Principal Scamilla and for you, LSC, you know, getting volunteers, so we could do great things in the neighborhood. Um, I have six things I wanted to do, what our goal is. One is infrastructure, safety, redevelopment, city services, COVID-19, and schools. For schools, I'm going to let you know, I'm advocating uh, to establish internships with uh, small businesses or businesses here in our ward. Um, I don't know if all you know, but um, we, we had the fields. I don't know if you're familiar with the fields on Pulaski and Diversity. So great opportunity is going to be coming there. We're going to have a film studio going to be built. Uh, we also going to have sm small businesses. So with the developer, I, I, we have an agreement that we're going to, uh, the businesses that come in, we want to hire it from the neighborhood and also give opportunities to students in the neighborhood. So the students from the neighborhood would be students from Foreman, would be students from Kelvin Park. So I'll be, you know, as time goes on, I'll be working, I'll be reaching out to <clears throat> Principal Escamilla or any of you in the LSC, letting you know to uh, give the opportunities to the students if they want to apply for a job, which is not too far and it's in the neighborhood. And uh, trying to work with the film studio to do job training. Um, and if they are successful in the job training, <coughs> excuse me, if they're successful in the job training, then they could be part of the film industry. You know, so, and what young uh, child, uh, man or woman or girl or boy would love to work in the film industry? To me, that's, all, you know, it's a great thing. It's something that, you know, um, they could, it's tangible that they could see. Um, so for the schools is advocating internships and doing work programs. And then also I'm trying to bring the trades into the school because I understand we want to push uh, the kids into college, but not all, 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 all students are meant for college. So we got to look into trades. So I'm trying to bring the trades into, up here into the Northwest side uh, so they could have a skill in, and then they could have a internship and then also be a journeyman or journey woman into the, into the, into the, into the field of trades. Um, also, <clears throat> I want to ensure that the principals and staff and students that we are uh, that they should be successful. And Prisco Escamilla knows that I'm there for you guys for form and whatever you guys need. Uh, him and uh, Prisco Escamilla and I have talked on certain things that the school needs to let me know. And then we could start working on bringing uh, resources to the school. Um, 
Also, one thing, Foreman's at, where Foreman's located, it's on Belmont, a Belmont Avenue. We're going to have that Cermak food across the street being uh, built. So I'm going to talk to the owner to do a job fair for the students because give these students an opportunity. It'd be great to go to school across the street and to have a part-timer across the street. And they live in the neighborhood and it's right there, accessibility. So I'm working on talking to the owner of Cermak Food to give it opportunities to these students over here at Foreman School. Um, also, as you see along Belmont Avenue, Belmont Avenue is shared between myself and Alderman Reboyes. And Alderman Reboyes has been here for a uh, very long time. He's, he's a seasoned alderman. So he's the person I go to because I'm in this job for two years for advice and for some wisdom. So we're trying to figure out how could we redevelop Belmont Avenue. Him and I had uh, the planning department commissioner uh, drive along Belmont Avenue and give us and let them know how could we redevelop Belmont Avenue. Because if we re redevelop Belmont Avenue and we bring small businesses, that means you give the students opportunities of learning how, A, how, how small business works, and they have an opportunity to work in the neighborhood as well. Uh, so it's, you know, it's something that uh, us, both of us are working really hard. Uh, even though Foreman's not in his ward, just down the street, he's on one side of the street and I'm on the other. So we share Belmont and this is the reason why I mentioned Alderman Reboyes. Um, I will continue to advocate for small businesses in our ward and I will, and I'm trying to make it attractive. Uh, in turn, for the students, to be involved in government, I would love for them to actually come and, because my, my, my ward is the 31st ward, but my goal is to service the community. And if you see and you follow me, my whole thing is all about servicing the community, not about myself, it's about the community. And if, we, if I could get students who want to help the community, this would be a great outlet to come work with me and also with Northwest Housing. And I'm going to give you a quick story. You heard the you heard Xander on the line. Xander called my office last week. He was with Jeremy walking, and they saw a tree being lifted up. The wind was blowing on Diversity Avenue, and the tree was lifting up. They call Jeremy sends me a, a picture and a text, and Xander sends me a text as well. And I go out there, and it was an emergency tree removal because if it didn't happen, this a tree would have fallen on Diversity. It would have hurt someone. But this is what uh, the youth at, um, at um, Northwest Housing do. They walk around. They 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 help residents. They get, they're engaged in the community. And uh, and with me, I'm engaged with them with the youth as well. So these are things that you know we I need your help, uh, and we can partnership to get some of the some of the students who want to be involved and engaged in the community to come either with me or they could go with Northwest Housing. And it's a great partnership and it's something that could benefit themselves uh, and do their civil duties because a lot of people don't know what an alderman office does. That's why I, I told uh, Principal Escamilla, I would love to have some students come to my office and spend the day so they could see government, how it works. And they could see you know, what we all do and so forth. And, and I'm hoping that City Hall will open soon and then us, we could go back to city council and I would invite students uh, from Foreman to do a field trip to come down. And then I would give the tour of city hall and also the tour of city council. When we're in council, they could see how government works on behalf of them in downtown and in city hall. But that's basically a nutshell. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak. And on the, on the chat again is Angel Vega his email, if you have any questions, feel free to email him and volunteers for this Saturday and, and further on, uh, we'll let you know. Thank you. Mr. Cardona, can I ask you a question? Thank you. Yes, sir. When you are speaking about Selma Cruz, uh, do we have a new location around our building? Sir, yes. So where the where the Planet Fitness is, is used to be across the street, okay. food is going to be there. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Right across Thank the street. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.
So now to conclude my report, I just wanted to share a few slides with everybody. Um, and I'll make this quick, but if we have any questions, I'll gladly field any question that you may have. So again, our focus with our CIWP, which is our three year long plan, um, emphasizes um, or prioritizes work around instruction, which it's a, there's a focus on differentiation with us, a focus on our multi-tiered system of support, which is our intervention documentation and referral system, and our um, quality and character of school life, which focuses on student voice, engagement, and civic life, and most recently, a focus on culturally relevant teaching practice or culturally responsive teaching practices. So what does the work look like re recently? So recently what we've been doing is we concluded our second round of learning walks within our instructional leadership team, which meant uh, that our instructional leadership team has been in visiting remote uh, learning classrooms. Um, I Gathering evidence and discussing what we see in classrooms so that we can provide more uh, specific workshops, training, and key information to all of our teachers in the school. Um, we've also had a, a recent workshop on Zaretta Hammond's book called um, Culturally Re uh, Responsive Teaching Practices and the Brain, which um, highlights um, how we can make a greater impact in culturally responsive teaching and what we should be considering when it comes to student development and brain research. And so we, we launched our training and workshops around this book just last week. And our culture and climate team has been recently surveying staff on how to better uh, provide them with training or um, key information around their priorities, which they've been doing a lot of training throughout the entire school year, which has been uh, social emotional learning, restorative practices, and our form and pride campaign. I know, I understand that um, what they're gonna be doing next is similar to what our instructional leadership team does, which is trying to gather data by visiting classrooms. So after all of this training on social emotional learning, after all of this training on pride and restorative practices, what is there to see via evidence when we visit classrooms? This is one of the things that they're going to be discussing next in, in culture and climate. So what's new and what's next? Um, just to share with you all, um, recently we received um, our order of 20 smart projectors that we're going to be installing in key classrooms throughout the building. Smart projectors are um, what you may envision a projector to be. Um, something that you hook up to your computer and projects to this to a wall, but the, it being a smart projector, what it does is that virtually you can create any white canvas, any white wall into a dry erase board using your finger. And so a, teach, a teacher or a student can use the board or use a wall simply to write with their finger instead of a dry erase marker. Um, and um, so this is what we're trying to, we thought this was a, 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 um, a good choice for us moving forward, trying to embed more technology use in our classes. Our sports teams have come back to begin their seasons. Our girls and boys uh, basketball, football, and soccer have all started. And so we're all excited about that. Um, you probably have seen um, on the weekly update because I try to connect all of our LSE members on the weekly update as well, that we had seniors over the weekend. I was here this past Saturday with the admin team um, and seniors started their senior pictures in the auditorium, um, practicing all the social distancing measures that we need to cover. Um, we do have a couple of committees that we need to establish. And I do want to loop in our LSC to participate in those committees. They asked me to also try to encourage you all to participate in these committees. There's one that's called the COVID Safety Committee, and the other one is a General School Safety Committee. Um, this one in the future will have us consider um, and vote on whether or not we want school resource officers, which are CPD officers, um, to continue to work with us at Foreman. 
Um, last year, we had voted that we wanted them to continue to um, work with us here at Foreman. And so they're here for this school year, but at the end of the school year, we're going to have to reconvene, reconvene for another vote. Um, and so part of that is um, serving on the general school and safety committee. Um, if there are any questions, you can throw them on the chat. I can help address them um, at any time soon. Um, I looked at our Google form and there, were, there seems to be no questions about um, any of the budget documents. Um, please feel free to per peruse the email I sent out to you today that um, explains the budget documents to you all and review the, the budget documents um, that you can ask uh, questions, make recommendations, make suggestions on anything that's connected to the budget um, as you review those documents. That is it for my report. Um, Maricela Mateos, you can call on the next person. Mm -hmm. um, a student representative? That would be me. Um, hello, all. So here's a little update on what I talked about last meeting. Um, we are finishing up the award ceremony for the second quarter, which will be held very soon. As for the kindness wall, Dr. Lopez filled the application where our committee will be receiving a fund to go forth with this project. We do have many ideas in mind to promote kindness, though we are still in the uh, brainstorming stage. We have had a guest speaker to talk about what makes up a student voice committee, what strengths can be seen, and what weaknesses can be, uh, can be improved. But we have yet to hear from the MICVA speaker. So the MICVA challenge is one way students can gather together and become empowered and pr promote a just society. I know that Dr. Lopez has been giving us the meet links to join these events and um, anyone can join really. It's not necessarily the student voice committee. So to sum up, we are moving step by step to achieve our goals and to satisfy um, student needs. And any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. How many, um, I have a quick question. Um, how many members do you currently have? How many of them are seniors? So you can start thinking about like how to recruit towards the end of the school year and what kind of support do you need from teachers or administration with that? So currently for every meeting, we would receive about 10 members. I do know there are at least three seniors. Um, we haven't been able to discuss many topics, but it would be nice for uh, other teachers to put in any ideas that they have for seniors or just ideas in general to help the Student Voice Committee. Okay, thank you. Bilagua Advisory Committee, back. Anything there? Ms. Tracy? Oh. I don't Tracy? see anyone. I don't see anyone from back on. Do you see? Oh, Ms. Tracy's on. I don't know if she wants to speak. And I am too, but I'm going to let her go first. Okay. NCLB, Par Advisory Committee, PAC. Miss Tracy just rejoined. Yeah, sorry. I've been having some technical difficulties, guys. Um, we have an upcoming meeting on Tuesday, March 23rd. Um, and we we actually had a lot of parents at our last meeting. Um, and Mr. Garces, our scheduler, kind of presented and walked parents through generally the whole system for newcomer parents, especially like how students accumulate credits, what credits they need to graduate, course sequences, grade point averages, it was a lot of information, but it was very important information. 
So we have an upcoming meeting on Tuesday, March 23rd. Mr. Asensio and I have to finalize that agenda tomorrow. And um, I hope that some of you can make it. Okay, thank you. Back. Thank you. Thank you too. Mm. Uh, for ya? Mm, no updates at my end. Okay, thank you. BP's LC. That will be me. We finally gathered um, the elections uh, for the committee, and we have a wonderful group or team of members who are uh, very eager to participate and to are very engaged in what we want to do for this school year. Many ideas were presented. I created a, a Google Classroom where all the members are uh, invited and will participate uh, for us to uh, at least um, present some ideas on how uh, to improve our school in terms of uh, academics and uh, some of the, the ideas for the curriculum. Um, Mr. Escamilla also uh, presented an idea of us creating or starting to create a journal for all the possible things that we have, uh, that we have uh, come up with or that we will come up with or programs that are uh, in the works that are uh, changing the school. Um, initially, that's that's the first step. Uh, our goal uh, is to create a uh, publication, uh, kind of like a newsletter. Uh, this is an idea that was presented by, by Principal Escamilla and that uh, many of us agreed upon. Uh, I think that the first step is just to brainstorm on ideas and start working on uh, logging in uh, some of the comments and some of the experiences that we have had in the past. Uh, our next meeting will be next month, uh, prior to the prior to the, the the meeting for the LSC. We used to have the meetings on the same day of the LSC, but we have uh, uh, decided that in order for us to be more effective, we would meet uh, through the Google Classroom with ideas and some feedback back and forth, and then have one meeting before the LSC meeting <coughs> at four o'clock so that we can have um, a much more refreshed uh, list of things that we can report. Um, other than that, I have nothing else. <coughs> Mr. Escamilla, can you present again the agenda? Thank you. Yes, Santa, are you available to present PAC? Uh, yes, yes, I Excellent. am. Thanks. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Santa and I'm part of the uh, PAC committee. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, sorry. It's just like I said, I'm having a lot of technical difficulties with my phone. Um, I just, do I just talk about this, the public participation? You're just sharing an update of um, what's been um, any highlights from the PAC from PAC. Okay. Um, well, uh, I think it was like two weeks ago, maybe we had a, we did have a, sorry, I'm just, my mind is everywhere, but we did have a meeting. Uh, it was very successful. Um, a lot of parents, uh, I think it's kind of like a therapy session to help with our 
children of all ages. Um, I think it went well. Um, we're also trying to uh, find more, I guess, uh, workshops for parents to help them uh, with the children. Um, activities for the students as well at Foreman um, with this whole uh, pandemic and, you know, kind of, I guess, slowly get them involved again socially. Trying to think what else to do. Ms. Montoya. Yes. How many members of the PAC attended to the last meeting? I'm curious. More um, than with the one with the the one that was successful, it, there was plenty of them. I honestly I don't remember the uh, the number. Um, David, do you remember? Yeah, we had um, a, a little over twenty five. Okay, yeah, that's nice. And, and, Very nice. And that um, session was about um, understanding like our students like minds like through like their neuro neurological um, like connections and understanding how they're dealing with like uh, the pandemic. Uh, and that was very helpful. Um, this, so we have a PAC meeting at 7 p.m. tonight. Mm -hmm. um, the link is on the calendar. Um, and we are gonna be discussing some um, potential like ideas for workshops for, for families. Um, we're gonna be discussing the budget. And then also Pamela uh, Price, who's the um, director of FACE um, is going to be there. Um, FACE is um, the uh, uh, parent university, which is like family and community engagement. And so she's going to be there to answer any questions as well um, for both our PAC and for anybody who um, attends the meeting this evening. And that's it. Chairperson, Chairperson Mateos, um, you can move us to the next agenda item. Gorgeous. Um, okay. We are reopening our public participation, Mr. Escamilla. Is there any anyone here to participate? Mm. There was no other additional people that signed up for our public participation but Mr. Israel Flores would like to have some time to talk about his upcoming um, running for the advisory board of LSC. Go ahead, Mr. Flores. Hi, everybody. So again, I'm Israel Flores. I do want to remind people that I attended Foreman from my freshman year to my junior year. Uh, Giving back to the community is something that I've been wanting to do and figuring out um, this opportunity with local school council uh, just uh, opened up my mind, uh, my eyes into uh, becoming uh, a stronger leader for my community. Um, with that being said, uh, that's why I chose to run for the local school council advisory board uh, for the Northwest side. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I. I'm a family business leader in the landscape industry. I work with my father. We specialize in removing trees. Um, I'm also an alum from University of Illinois at Chicago. I gathered, I um, received my bachelor's in sociology and criminal justice. There's where I really um, began developing my communication skills verbally and written. Uh, I believe those skills would be useful in the uh, lo local school local school council advisory board. So I just want to uh, let people know that I, I'm running uh, to represent the Northwest side area. And just wanted to let you know that our meeting, our forum would be uh, Thursday, this Thursday at six. Um, I can, I'll post the, the information on the comment so people are aware of it. And um, I'll shoot an email to everybody in the local school council. Uh, hopefully I can get your support. Thank you. 
That sounds great. If you want to send it my way, I can put it on the, on the website as well. Um, uh, Chairperson Mateos, there are no more um, people that signed up for public participation unless other people want to speak from the LSE. We will now adjourn our meeting. Is there anyone that would like to motion to adjourn? I move to uh, adjourn today's meeting of March 16, 2021. Um, thank you, guys. Is there anyone to speak on the motion? A second. I second. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Chairperson Mateos, you have to move it to a vote. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Ms. Woods has raised her hand. No, I, that's just I. <laughs> oh, okay, sir. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I must escape from the meeting. Have a great evening. You too, ma'am. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Have a great evening. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.